Today I'm in South Lyon, Michigan at the homestead of Jesse Thiessen and we're going to find out all the different operations that he's doing on his farm. He's got layers, he's got broilers, he's got turkeys, and there's a lot of other things he could do. We'll find out what he's doing, how he's doing it, and why he's doing it in this video here coming up. Jesse, we're at your place here in South Lyon, Michigan. What would you consider what you have here? You live here. Is it a homestead? Is it a farmstead? Is it a farm? What do you have and what are you trying to do? So I would consider this a homestead. Um, our original goal was to produce nutritious food for our family. Um, we were really concerned about all the GMOs and processed foods. So we started there. Um, and as we had some surplus, we would give it to friends and family who would then say, this is fantastic. Can you grow some for me. So it's kind of blossomed from there. Um, we've incorporated last year to make things official. We're now moving into the farmstead realm. Uh, the ultimate goal is the side hustle, you know, make enough money to pay for this, pay for our food, and then have a little bit extra money. To get into this, like, what was the initial draw for you? Is it a fun thing? Is it a quality of food thing? Is it, you know, you're fed up with some sort of industrial system? What was the big, this is why I want to do this? Because you didn't always live here. You moved here to do this. Right, right. So I think it's a combination of all the above. Um, we definitely are concerned with just having uh, young children. We were concerned with the processed food, you know, the GMOs, and what that's doing to their health long term. Um, it's very enjoyable to me. There's something very um, almost spiritual about raising your own food, you know, putting your hands in the soil. And then I come from a family of farmers. Um, my mom grew up on a dairy farm. My uncles still farm commercially. So I've always been drawn to farming, really enjoy it and wanted to, to do that. You know, of the animals you have here, you have broilers, you have turkeys, you have layers. What's your favorite one? Uh, I think the turkeys are probably surprisingly my favorite. They're very personable when you come out. They run to the fence to greet you. They'll follow you around like a dog. So that's been interesting. Um, I like the, the laying hens mainly because my son, he just, he loves them. He's like the little chicken whisperer. He comes out and helps me every day with, uh, with chores doing them. And then the chickens are small enough where he's not intimidated. The turkeys are about his height, so they, they intimidate him a bit. But uh, one thing I want to note here is you're doing this all on the side. You work a full-time job outside the home, managing these three operations, broilers, layers, turkeys. How has that been doing that on a nights and weekends basis? There's certainly challenges. Um, I'm trying to put in place systems to make it as automated as possible. Um, I just recently built the, the Eggmobile. They've been in, the layers have been in there for probably about seven months now. Um, there's an automatic door, so I don't have to get up in the morning to let them out and let them in at night. Basically, all I have to do every day is gather the eggs up, make sure the, the water's clean and that they have food. Um, turkeys are pretty much same thing, self-sufficient, make sure they've got food and it's got an automatic water. The broilers are the most labor intensive, but even that, moving them once a day, um, make sure they have feed and water, maybe 15, 20 minutes. So in all, I may be spending an hour a day and it's quite therapeutic for me. After a long day in the office, I come home, I get outside, I get to breathe fresh air, work with the animals. So to me, it's not really a chore. It's, it's enjoyable. Sure. How have you refined this over time to make it simpler or easier or better given that you have you know an hour a day and you don't want to spend five hours a day even though it is therapeutic it is fun but it can't dominate all your time sure i think the biggest uh improvement has been the egg uh, getting that so that i'm moving the the hens to fresh grass once a week um, they're not getting dirty and playing in the mud uh, the eggs are cleaner then so when i'm packaging and cleaning eggs they're not as dirty it's got the the automatic door on it so that is a huge labor save there so before everything every morning I had to go up open the door out to let them out things like that um, having electric netting to protect them from predators has been a, a huge plus 
I did have some predator issues initially. Learned the hard way about uh, how ingenious certain predators can be. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm still learning. You know, I, your podcast and just reading other people what's going on out there. There's so many ideas, so many unique uh, solutions to to make things better. You know, I think a lot of people are trying to do this and are in the same boat. So they're it's really helped seeing what everyone else is doing. You have kids, you enjoy what you do out here, you work an office job. What would you be doing in this time if you didn't have the homestead activities? What would fill the void? Oh, it's a good question. You know, I'd probably be sitting and watching football on Sunday or something like that, what people typically do. But, um, yeah, I really enjoy getting out and doing things. You know, there's always something to do, some project, and it, it helps to keep your mind sharp too. I mean, when things go wrong, you got problems to solve. So it's it's that aspect of it. My son really enjoys it. So it's something we can share together and do. It's uh, been a lot of fun having him come around and help me out with stuff. So I, it's a lot of beyond just the economic value of it, there's a lot of good uh, healing benefits, I guess I would say, from, uh, from what we're doing. So, because during the week you're sitting in an office, you come from a farming background, do you really feel like, like some of what you're doing here, a lot of what you're doing here just resonates with something like deeper inside of you absolutely. and like you'd be, you'd be lacking it if you didn't have it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean. Uh, so my mom grew up on a dairy farm. My uncle still farm, um, and I, from the youngest age, I wanted to, to farm. I used to spend all my spring breaks and, and summers up on my grandparents' farm. Um, you know, the way things worked out, it just didn't was in the cards. But I've always had that drive and, and desire to to farm. So it's uh, kind of a way to satisfy that that need within me. You know, despite you loving it and fulfilling that need, how much of the time is it like, oh, I got to do that? There's definitely days like that. Um, I mentioned earlier this summer, I, I threw my back out and it was it was pretty bad. I couldn't even hardly get out of bed. So it suddenly turned from something that was enjoyable to something that was extremely stressful because I knew the, the birds don't care. You know, they still need fed every day. The eggs still need gathered. I had broilers at the time, which needed process. They were basically supposed to go to the, I was going to process them two or three days before or after I hurt my back. So I was, my wife and uh, son were now having to sh take on the burden of doing some of the work. So there's, you know, it, it's not all perfect. I think people sometimes over romanticize all of what the homesteading, farmsteading, but there's definitely uh, stressors involved with it too. How does it work in terms of a, a family context? Your kids love it. They like it. They can learn from it. You mentioned that your wife, she's okay with it, but she's not into it. She's not out here necessarily helping you. His, it, sometimes that can create a struggle mm -hmm. between you know personalities and people. How have you made it work with her and what she wants to do and where she wants to go with things? Yeah, um, overall it's been fantastic. She's been extremely supportive. Um, my son, like I said, he helps all the time, loves it. My daughter comes out and she she likes the the meat and you know it's kind of funny because she now she knows where the that chicken's gonna end up as my chicken nugget later on my plate, so she's okay with that. Um, but there's sometimes struggles, and, and my wife, being a city girl, you know, she's helped out a ton. She's actually processed birds with me. She did it a few times. She doesn't really want to do it anymore, and that's another reason why we're we're going to the offsite processor because as a, we scale up, I just can't do it all by myself. Um, she's tried to, she's the good, like the yin to my yang, I think. So I would like to get a some cattle, things like that, and she pumps the brakes, you know, hey, we still want to take family vacations and whatnot. We can't have that. So there, there's that side of it. But overall, she's been extremely supportive. I think it's been great for the entire family to deal with where your food comes from. And, you know, sure. It just doesn't show up in a package from the store. So uh, there's overall the benefits of far outweighed any, any negatives. You know, and she's bringing that balance to the table. 
one thing that I struggle with, I know a lot of people struggle with, whether that's businesses or hobbies, is we tend to let our enthusiasm dominate our actions, which means sometimes we bite off way more than we can chew. How do you feel like you manage what you take on knowing that you're committed to an employer mm -hmm. you know, five days a week sure. and this has the other time, but there's other things you want to do in life with the other people in your life. Do you feel like you're pretty good at restricting what you do? No, not me. Um, <laughs> I am. Uh, I look around even as I'm staring here right now and I see a hundred things I want to do. And that's always been probably one of my best and worst qualities where my wife is very good. She actually does the books for the farm and runs all the numbers. So when I get some crazy idea and I want to run it faster or do it, she's like, well, let's pencil it out. Let's take a look at it. Let's make sure it makes sense uh, you know, economically and we've got the bandwidth to do it. So um, yeah, I think we make a very good team in that aspect that she definitely keeps me grounded and makes sure that some of my crazy ideas don't necessarily come to to reality, which is good because I know when we first moved in, I was taking on too much. I was trying to do too many things. It's almost as soon as we moved in three years ago, I got chickens and uh, we had predators come in and wipe them out. And that really got me down. And it was just, so, you know, when things don't always go the way you want, it can put a damper on things. So how do you know when you're doing too much? That may sound obvious, <laughs> but you know, Sometimes a really busy person doesn't realize that they're doing more than they should. You know, quality could suffer. Yeah. You could forget things. Do you have some sort of guide where you, you got to check yourself and realize, oh, man, I'm taking on too much here? Yeah. So um, I become much more diligent in record keeping, uh, making sure we actually know what's coming in, how much we're making, how much out is outflowing. So we're doing very good uh, record keeping. And then about once every quarter or so, I, I've been journaling and taking the records of all the, the animals and what's going on. I assess that about once a quarter, you know, what's working, what isn't working, where can we, you know, if we have major failures, is it because I took too much on or is it just because of lack of knowledge or, you know, what's the root cause of those problems? So um, I think we've been, or I've been much more diligent about making sure I'm not just doing, but taking the time to step back assess what's going on, see where you're making mistakes, and then adjusting from there. So when you think about that, the record keeping, the hundred things you're looking around here seeing you want to do, how do you pick what the next thing is to focus on? Um, I think the main thing is, you know, what's the immediate needs? Is it something that needs to be done, say, to get ready for winter? Or is it something that you want to do? And then if it's something you want to do, a new um, enterprise, taking a look at the numbers, you know, making sure that we really have the time to do it. Does it, do we have a customer base for it? Does it make sense economically? What additional infrastructure is going to be needed? You know, really going through a systematic approach as opposed to just, man, I heard this on Diego's podcast yeah. and this sounds so cool. <laughs> I want to do this tomorrow type yeah. of thing. So. Dive right in. Exactly. And realize, oh, what a big mistake I made. <laughs> exactly. Been there, done that. Yeah.